morning everybody. Uh, welcome back. Today I thought I would try to do a tutorial on how I create my fabric covers. Um, I've had a lot of people ask about that and I know a lot of people want to get started with the fabric. I'm no expert. I'm purely self-taught and um, this is just how I have done it. I've been very happy with the results that I've had, but um, <clears throat> you may have a different way um, and you might, after trying this, find some shortcuts that you're happy to share with the rest of us. So I'm just going to get started. I don't know how many um, installments I'll have to make of this because I've never done it before like this and um, uh, I'm a little nervous because um, the fabric <clears throat> isn't as easy because I, I'm not that skilled sewing. So I, I don't know, you may see a lot of oops here. I hope not. I'm hoping I can do this very smoothly because I don't want to confuse anybody. But we'll see. We'll see how we get on. Um, first of all, you're going to need to decide the size of your journal, um, just like you would with paper. Um, this particular journal, I know... The cover is going to end up <clears throat> eight and a quarter, um, and the pages. Uh, well, I want it to be eight and a quarter high by five and a quarter at the end. But I also like the look of them folding back over. So um, I'm hoping you guys can see the little numbers here. These are. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this isn't starting out well. This is one of those cutting pads, and I think it's probably made for quilters, but I don't know. But you, you'd really want one of these. Um, but I just, first of all, um, do out my measurements. I ended up on this one that we're going to, to get this size journal, eight and a quarter by five and a quarter. I have ended up cutting this at... It's 28 inches long, but folded over 14. Uh, and I'll explain to you why in just a second. But let me go back and say, <coughs> if I were you um, starting out, I personally would start out with a, a cotton material because the heavier fabrics, I still haven't felt as though I've graduated to working with those because corners, depending on what you're going to do, like my hardcover uh, journals, I can't get the corners with heavy material um, the way I like them. So I, I, I do think lightweight material is probably a good place to start. Um, and muslin's cheap. Um, if you make any mistakes, you're, you know, it's not the end of the world. You're also going to need some uh, batting um, to put in the middle of it. Um, I think that's it. Okay, now you're probably saying, well, why, do you, why have you cut that material um, so long? The reason is <clears throat> when I come back and fold this um, to where it's going to be about five and a quarter, then I know I'm going to have some excess so that I can um, fold it back over because I, I kind of like the fabric journals to... You don't have to do that. If you want it to be just an open journal that you have a different type of closure, then you'll just adjust the measurement for that, obviously. Um, so, um, and I'm not... I always leave a little bit over because once I put the first stitch I can then come back with my um, rotary blade and clean up the edges so that it has a really nice finish to it. Um, okay, so let me think. So you'll cut out your, um, your batting to fit the material, sandwich that together, and then you just decide on what kind of stitch you want. I think the zigzag really works nice because I think it probably reinforces it a little bit better to stop some of the fraying. 
<laughs> but please, I, anybody that has any advice on this, I know there's people out there that are more experienced. I'm totally open to um, suggestions, so just leave those below, and I'll try to pass those on in um, future videos, you know, because I will revisit this at some point when I get better, but I just wanted to, to make a jump start on this, and we'll do this together. Um, and then we'll decide on how we're going to do some collaging on it um, later. I just always like to get the base of it done, clean it up, and then start deciding about the closure and things. So anyways, I'm going to go to the machine, I'm going to do some stitching, and I'll be back. Okay guys, I have been to the machine and stitched around here. You can see it's not perfect, um, but I'm happy with it. And at this point, this is where I come back and measure this because I know it's got to be, um, let me get my, the cover it has got to be eight and a quarter. Well, this is our eight and a half, so I've got very little on this one to play with. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the very edge off of that, and I hope I can do this so you guys can see. So just, <clears throat> these these little mats are amazing because you can line them up um, so that you get a nice straight line. And I, like I said, I only want to take the very edge off because I don't want to end up with this too small. I'd rather have it overhang a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to get that very edge off. And if you are a person who likes it to be really shabby, you don't have to come back and do this stuff. But you guys know I'm a little bit um, fussy about, about that kind of stuff. So, okay, I'm just going to turn this over. I just want to make sure I'm not, I'm not starting to get into... Yeah, I got room. I can just take the edge off and clean that up a little bit more on that side. And then, after I've done this, I'm going to go back to the machine and, and do another These are amazing tools. I just discovered that <laughs> about, hmm, I reckon I've had him about four months, and oh my goodness, I wouldn't be without one of these now. And you guys are going to be delighted to know I, I bought myself a good pair of uh, fabric scissors, so now these are going to have to go into a locked drawer so the husband doesn't get his hands on those. Um, let me just look down here and make sure I'm happy with the edges on this one. I'm going to cut, I think. Mm. Yeah, let me just trim these end ones just slightly, and then I'm going to run it back through um, the zigzag again. And that'll just um, hopefully stop some of that fraying because, um, you know, it, it, it does look nice. Uh, and like I said, if, if it doesn't bother you, you don't need to do this. But it does kind of bug me. I don't mind some fraying, but I don't want it excessive. So anyways, alright guys, so what I'm going to do now is just go back and I'm going to do another zigzag just to completely finish that off. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll be back. Okay guys, I'm back. I did the um, stitching. There you go. Um, what I do on the end of that uh, tie is I just fold it back over. It just gives it <coughs> a bit more finish. Um, to the edge and it'll stop it from <clears throat> coming undone there. So I've stitched it from here all the way to where I had pinned it 
and then um, if if you want it to be a single, I do this all in one go when you're um, otherwise you can see I had to I've, I've gone over it again so it's got that but I'm not bothered about it because it kind of goes with that. Um, so just to give you an idea how it's looking so far, it's going to come over. I'm going to put this vintage button there because I love big buttons. Oh my gosh, do I love big buttons. So that is going to go there. And then, um, so I'll hand stitch that on. And then this is just going to be wound around and back so that you can hold it in place. Okay, so before I start doing anything inside, um, I'm just trying to think. I feel like I'm maybe overwhelming you guys, and I don't want to do that, but I do want you to be conscious of things you got to think about before you get too far along. Um, <clears throat> if you wanted to leave this fabric, and you wanted to maybe put some fabric pockets, um, you want to do those steps probably before you even put this on. But just remembering everything you do inside is going to show outside. Everything you do outside is going to show inside. So, um, uh, let me show you my... This is my journal. And I added a fabric pocket, but I did all of this. This is different to the front because I did this as a, like a little patchwork. Very primitive patchwork, but patchwork all the same. I This is a separate piece of, um, in fact, this was a placemat. And I just cut the pockets, the embroidery out, and stitched it to this, then that got sandwiched so that this didn't show through, which on this it wouldn't have been a big deal, but I still wouldn't have wanted that. So just think about those things. Um, I wish I had one of my fabric journals to show you guys, but I don't. But what I'll just tell you how I'm going to finish this off is going to be um, cardstock. And then I'll, uh, you know, I would do all my stitching on the cardstock, and then I would just take my fabric um, tack and glue that inside. Um, so anyways, that's just something to be very much aware of. Anything that you do outside is going to certainly show up in here and vice versa. Okay, sorry, I just, I just think of stuff and I think, oh, I must, because there's nothing more frustrating than get this all beautiful and you come in and stitch a pocket and you've ruined your whole design. It's it's awful. And how do I know? Because it's happened to me. I've done it. I've done it, people. <laughs> okay, so anyways, we're back to, um, at this point, I want to go ahead and collage my cover because I want all my stitching done before I add the cardstock inside so that it, it doesn't, the stitch doesn't come through on that cardstock. So, um... <clears throat> I've been playing around, and this particular journal, I am going to be a, um, I'm a guest designer for Artistic Printables for You. Uh, Marge approached me a couple weeks back, and I expressed an interest in if I could um, demo one of her kits, and I you know, at the time told her, you know, I could, but she'd have to be a little bit patient. I was overwhelmed at the time with orders, and she was um, sweet enough to give me that uh, bit of time to clear out my um, orders. So you guys check her out. This, I'm not labeling this a design team project because it's the tutorial, but when the journal is complete, I will do a flip through so that you can fully see her kit um, it's beautiful. If you if you want to go ahead of time and have a look, it's the Sunflower Kit and Marge Artistic Principles for You is on Etsy. So you can check out her kit in advance. It's beautiful. 
I love sunflowers. So, um, like I said, I'll do a, <coughs> a finished um, flip through of the journal. But for um, for this part, I just wanted you guys to know which kit I am working with on this. So, and, you know, I've played around a bit because um, I didn't want to bore you guys with shuffling through my laces. Um, and I've, I think I've decided I quite like this because it's a complete contrast to the um, dark um, stitching. And you guys know I kind of like leather and lace. Um, I just think everything has a nice feel if it's soft with harsh, if that makes sense. I've, I've, I've called my own um, a style rustic chic because I like rustic, but I love shabby chic. I just don't go fully to shabby chic because it's a bit too fussy and frilly for me. So I've just named my style as rustic chic and that's kind of my thing on that is I like soft with harsh things and I think it just really complements, I don't know, I'm no expert, but that's that's how I am. Okay, so anyways, this is three of the little um, journaling cards that come in um, the kit and <clears throat> I've just been playing around a bit. And let's see. Um, you know, this is how I do uh, my collaging. I just try things, and it does take time. There's no shortcut to it, guys. You can't believe how many times I've cut out things, place them down. You know, this is a perfect example. I printed this kit out, um, I think it was last Sunday or Monday. And I had in my mind, as soon as I printed it, oh, that's what I'm going to use. And over the, you know, as things start, your journal starts to come together, things change. And this is a prime example of that. Um, there's just really very little I could tell you guys on the collaging of a cover, except you've got to, to experiment with things. And it does mean often cutting things out. Um, and to get a specific image, sometimes I have to cut into an envelope, for example. It's unfortunate, but if it doesn't work, I've lost that envelope. But it's only ink at the end of the day. It's paper and ink. So, you guys, that's, all, that's my advice to you, is just play around until visually something appeals to you. And don't be afraid to go on Pinterest. Um, don't be afraid to save um, images on Etsy. Um, you know, people that that you're inspired by, and and use those people and images to help you learn to piece together things. That's that's my advice because that's how I did it. It was just playing around until I thought, oh, I actually like that. And you're always holding your breath thinking, oh, I like it, but is anybody else? <laughs> so, you know, you list something and it's putting yourself out there. There's no other way to do it. You put yourself out there every time you do a video, every time you, do, you list one of your creations, because your heart is in that. If it's handmade, your heart is in it. And... It really is putting you in a vulnerable position, but if you want to grow as a person, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. So um, this is one of them. And if you get a journal that's sticking, you know, don't beat yourself up over it, but learn from it and say, okay, well, obviously that hasn't really gelled with people. So what can I do to improve upon it? But don't get depressed about it, guys, because everybody has been there. Um, I still create things that I like, and they hang and hang and hang. I reduce them because at the end of the day, i got to pay my bills. And, you know, sometimes you just have to do these things to clear out and start afresh. So... Um, just don't beat yourself up, guys. Learn from it and just keep trying until you find something that fits for you. And there you go. This is what happens when I have three pots of coffee. <laughs> By what? 
9 nine thirty in the morning. Um, so anyways, I have played around with this a bit. And, <clears throat> you know, you just... I am no expert. But, for me, why do I come to some of the, you know, the conclusions that I do with it? Um, that... I love the honey in this trim that I've got. I picked this up at an um, antiques market. And I like that because it pulls some of that from the images. So I'm pretty sure. But I always then come back and say, okay, this is going to be there. It's going to cover some of your image. There's no getting around it. But it still, to me, visually still looks nice. Um, now, the only thing I think I would do is cover up that bit of writing because I feel like it's just getting to be too much. Let me move this down. I think the hardest part about the collaging is um, getting things stitched the way you want it because uh, I, you know, you got to be, you got to get in under the machine and do each one of these individually, or I do. I stitch around them. Then I come back and layer this one. Then this will be the last one that I'm going to stitch. So, okay. Um, so I mess around with it. I add, you know, some lace and think, oh, I don't know. Do I like that? Not. Um, but those are final touches you can do at the end. The main thing is you got to get this down and then come back and start doing that. So I'm going to do that, guys. I'm sorry about this. I know you'd probably like to see me doing the machine. It's too difficult for me to try to set up the camera over there. Um, so I will walk it through step by step as to what I did, and you can um, do the same. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, guys. Uh, kind of lost track of where we were. I'm sorry. Um, I have stitched the collaged image is on. I'm really happy with how it's come out. Um, I had first added a bit of that uh, vintage trim because I thought it needed a bit of warmth against this. Um, and then I also went ahead and stitched on our button so that that now will... <clears throat> I didn't stitch it too tight. That way it would... Um, I could come back and twist this around. And if you find that, that your um, closure is too long, you can always snip it and then just fold it back up and you know to finish it off a bit. I might do that on this one because I think it is going to be too long. But I will leave that <coughs> until I've put my signature inside. So um, I want to finish off this cover and then... Um, then I, the next step, once I've done all this, would be <clears throat> to cut out my um, cardstock, and then I would stitch on, I'd do all my fussy stitching on the cardstock, and then I would come back um, and glue that in, and then I would sew my signature in. Um, I think what I'll do... Let's finish off this cover, and I think this will be the part one, and then I think as I make progress within this, I'll just bring you guys along, and you could just go through with me on the next couple of steps. It won't take long. Um, this probably is the longest part for me. Um, okay, guys, uh, back to where I was. Um, all right, so I don't know. I'll give you another close-up of where we are with it so you can see. And uh, and so anyways, I want to do a little bit more collaging on here with some different materials. Uh, and then once the journal is done, <clears throat> I would then probably come back. If there's anything I'm wanting to add with a bulb, um, pin, you know, with a little tag. If I do anything like that, I'd leave it to the end because when you're working in it, all that movement, you just don't, you know, I, I just generally leave the really, really final touches to the end. But this, I'm happy to go ahead. I, um, 
I found this bit of trim and I like the contrast of that white against that. So this um, I'm just trying to think how I want to attach this. I'm going to put just a few drops of glue and hold this one down. You could stitch it. Um, I am debating if I should stitch that. Uh, I'm going to I'm just going to try it with a few drops and then I may end up coming back. The reason I'm hesitating on the glue is because that being on the front cover, I do not want this glue to show through. And obviously I want to make sure it's it you know, it's not going to come off. Um, so I probably will come back and maybe just run a little stitch. I don't know. We'll see. If I was going to do that, I'd do it before I carry on in the inside. So I'll think that over. I'll let you guys know, but that's probably what I would do. And then I found this little... <clears throat> this is off of my doily, and I love these. Oh, what a bargain that was. I got that big doily. I think I gave about 25 cents for it, and it was huge. And I have used that and used it. So that was a really good deal. Because sometimes you just want some little something under, underneath. I'm going to put a little bit more glue to hold that down. Because I don't, I don't like anything flopping around. And then, like I said, at the end, I, I'm kind of thinking at the end this is going to end up with a little tag and a one of the bulb pins. But I never know. <laughs> you know, I start off with one thing and then, there you go, end up with something else. But I'm really happy with how that's come out. So what I'm going to do is sit that to the side, let it glue. I'll get this put on so you guys can see this is part one. And I'll be back to show you part two. Thanks, guys. You have a great weekend. Bye.